here from One Dog Wolf and in today's video we're going to be making coil baskets. They're crocheted um, and they do use a core in the middle of it so you're not going to be crocheting the entire body. Uh, you're actually going to be crocheting around the center core. So for the core we're going to be using piping filler cord, which is this. Um, this is the stuff that you see on the edge of your sofas or on the edge of your pillows to make that sort of uh, round edge. And they come in different widths, so this is a pretty thick one, and you also have really thin ones as well. You can use any kind that you can get your hands on, and then we're going to be crocheting a round. Um, it's going to be done in continuous rounds, so this is a coil basket, so here's the inside, and then there's the bottom, alright, and you can make it in any color that you like. You can also make it in any size that you like. So this is actually a round basket but you can see it's soft and it's pliable and you can almost carry it like a, a bag. So this is great for holding uh, projects, for holding yarn, just holding anything that you have around the house. All right, so let's get started. Hey everyone, so we're going to be making a basket and um, it just has a few different supplies. First thing you're gonna need is a crochet hook. I chose a four millimeter crochet hook to use with my yarn. This is Lime Brand 24-7. Uh, it's a cotton yarn. It's a little bit mercerized and it doesn't have a lot of stretch, which makes it really great for uh, these types of purposes, baskets and bags. And then this is 3 8 inch uh, cotton piper filling. This is the stuff that you see borders your couches and your pillows. Um, usually you wrap fabric around it, but we're going to actually use it plain. And this is going to be the structure of your basket. So, and then of course you're going to need a stitch marker because we'll be working in the round. Okay, so I'm going to put this aside. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start with a magic circle. All right. So you leave yourself a bit of a tail. You need enough of a tail to tie a knot at the end. Um, and we're going to use the tail to sort of wrap around the end of the filling uh, because you can see this is going to fray very quickly. So I'm going to give myself a nice long tail and then I'm going to work a magic circle. Now so the, here's my magic circle. I'm going to chain. So this is my magic circle right here. And I'm going to work eight single crochets into the magic circle. Now I chose eight because I want the bottom of my basket to be flat. Um, a lot of hats and other stuffed animals may start with six stitches in a magic circle. Um, and that tends to curve when you increase in multiples of six but for a basket, I'm going to keep it at eight. And then I find that if I go larger than that, it starts to ruffle. So I, here I have eight stitches, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then I'm gonna take my beginning yarn and I'm gonna pull it tight, okay? And I'm not gonna join in the round. Um, I'm going to just hold it like this. I'm not gonna to join to the first round. So let me show you how we're going to add the cotton filling. Okay, so you have the active yarn to your left. Put the cotton filling on top. Give yourself about two inches of space because it will fray, all right? And then you're going to wrap the axe of yarn around and you're going to make a slip stitch right here. I guess that's more of a chain stitch. Um, but either way, you're going to hold it in place with that one loop. All right, let me show you that again. So right here, you have your hook in the last stitch of the first round. You're gonna put the cotton filling on top of the yarn, and then you're gonna yarn over and pull through and tighten, and that's gonna lock the cotton filling in place. And now we're going to make one chain stitch, and this is gonna give us some room to work with. So now we're ready to work into the, um, the last stitch of the first round, which will be the first stitch of the second round. Okay, so you're gonna insert your hook into the last stitch, sorry, the first stitch of the first round. And sometimes this is a little bit tight, okay? Now you're gonna put the hook under the filling and your active yarn is on top. And you're, so then you're gonna yarn over over the filling, let's not call it filling, let's call it the piping. 
I'm going to pull through, pull through the stitch uh, that you worked into. And then you're going to, instead of completing the single crochet right there, you're going to pull that yarn all the way up to the outside of the piping, and then you're going to complete the single crochet because you want the stitches along the outside rim. You don't want it too close to the center, right? This is the center, and then this is the outside rim. And then for the second uh, round, we're going to be making two stitches. We're going to be increasing. So we had eight, and we're going to be making 16 stitches in this round. So we're going to be working a second stitch into the same stitch we worked before. Again, yarn over, pull that yarn around the piping up, and then pull it up, give yourself enough room so that you can complete the single crochet along the outer edge of the piping. And that's how you s start um, and lock in the piping. So this part, you can let it fray. You can also tape it if you don't want it to fray. And then when we are all done, we're going to take the beginning yarn and we're going to be able to close it off um, into the bottom of our basket. Okay, there's the beginning. So I'm going to continue making two single crochets in each stitch around. And notice, I'm going to just let the piping sit here. I'm not going to hold it. I'm not going to try to turn it with me. I'm just going to let, let it sit and then let my crochet sort of dictate how much of the piping to use. Um, if I pull it, it tends to get squished. It tends to just do weird and funky things. You really just want to let it go where it wants to go. Okay, so yarn over, pull up, and don't complete, don't try to complete the single crochet too close to the center. You want to pull it and give it enough room so that you can finish the single crochet along the outer edge. Okay, and then one more. So now we should have done, let's see, if we look at our stitches, this was our first slip stitch, then we had a chain, and then we've made one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I almost lost the stitch. Eight stitches. And now we're going to just work all the way around. And I will show you how to join rounds so that we can continue in a coil. All right, so we're going to continue working around. And it's two stitches in each stitch from the first round. Now, as we get around, you're going to start seeing that the end is going to start getting in the way. So you want to make sure to hold it back. Okay, and then we have one more stitch right here that we're going to work into. And then this, with the end, I don't want it over the active yarn. So I want to tuck it under and out of the way. I want to complete the last stitch of the round. All right, I should have used a stitch marker early on, um, but I also know where we started. If you don't know, you can count 16 stitches back. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So 16 is actually, where is it? 16 is a little bit twisted. 16 is right here. All right, let me make sure I cut it right. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, 8, 9, 10. Oh, I missed a stitch somewhere. Ah, I didn't double up back here. Okay, so let's double up this one. All right, and then we work into the last one. Okay, and now we're going to coil. You can see that the piping just wants to keep going around. And that's why you want the stitches on the outer edge because you're going to be working into these stitches uh, for the next round. So what we're going to do is we're going to find the first stitch of the, of the round. We're going to insert that, insert the hook into that stitch, and we're just going to keep going. All right, so now this is the first stitch of the second round. And this time I am going to open up a stitch marker and put it right on that first stitch. All right, so now I know that that's 
the first stitch. And again, I'm not trying to hold the piping down as I go. I don't want to force it because that'll end up um, just squeezing the circle. I want the circle to form naturally. So for the third round, we're going to do one and then we're going to increase in the next stitch. And you can see that these stitches get really wide along the, the outside rim and that's okay. All right, and then the next stitch is going to be a single and then an increase. And then you can see I'm not touching the piping at all. I'm just letting it go where it wants to go. The crochet will pick it up um, the way it wants to be picked up. All right, and then let me stop there for a moment. You can see it's starting to come in towards the edge, uh, towards the middle a little bit. Every once in a while you can just kind of bend the stitches outwards towards the outside rim and that'll make it a little bit easier to work at. You see that there's a hole that has formed in the center. And that's okay too because you'll take your beginning yarn and you're going to pull that tight. And that's why you want a really sturdy yarn because I am putting quite a lot of force on it and that closes up the circle. And that's why we want to start with a magic circle because um, we can pull the center tight to close that up. And then when you are done, you're going to take this, you're going to tape um, the end of the piping and then you're just going to kind of hold it down and then use the beginning yarn to sew over and over again to kind of hold it in place. You can probably also glue it. Um, I find that if I tape it and I just go wrap, wrap it round and round, it tends to hold it in place pretty well. Okay, and this is the right side. This is actually going to be the outside of your basket and this is going to be the inside of your basket. So we're going to keep going and you're going to continue working the rounds just like this along the outside. You're going to be creating a coil until you reach the desired uh, size of your base, the base of your basket. So if you want a small basket, maybe you want to stop here and then you turn it over and then we're going to work upwards. If you want something larger, you're going to keep going many more rounds until you get the size of the base that you want. Okay, so now we're coming in here. We have created, I have created the base of my basket. I have chosen that this is about nine inches and this is going to be the base of my basket. What you're looking at right now is the part that's going to touch the table. If you flip it over, this is the inside of your basket. So let's orient ourselves here. So if we look at it this way, the wall is going to go up this way. This is the outside, okay? I have started the first stitch of my next round and I've um, labeled it with a stitch marker. So you can kind of see this is where I've made the increases. You know, it makes a really fun pattern here. But if you're familiar with crochet, uh, you know that once you start making the walls of a basket, you're no longer going to be doing any increases. So we're not going to be mo moving, we're not going to be increasing anymore or working two uh, single crochets into the same stitch. So we're always just going to be working single crochets all the way around. And we're not going to be, because we're not increasing the size anymore, we're not going to be letting this just kind of hang naturally, like I have said before. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to tug on it a little bit. So you're going to tug on it, make it a little bit tighter, and then you're going to tuck it underneath um, the previous row. Because what you really want to do is you want to start building these up to create the wall. So we're going to make a single crochet I mean, this is, at this point, you can even stop counting if you want. You're just going to be making single crochets, no more increases, but you're going to keep tugging it a little bit and then tucking it in. Tug and tuck. Okay? Tug and tuck. Now, because it is a coil basket, it's going to look a little bit lopsided, um, but it all kind of stabilizes out in the end. So, it gets a little awkward. You're going to tug and tuck and then you're going to work that single crochet and sometimes when you let go it like pops back up. That's okay. So you can see as I tug um, I'm using, I'm just making the piping tighter because I don't want to increase the amount of piping that I use. I don't want it to lay flat anymore. I want it to sit on top here. And I find that this is the only round where you're going to be doing a little bit of tugging and you don't want to like over tug it either. You just want to give it a little bit of a tug, make sure that you're just kind of keeping it on 
I guess you're changing direction, right? This is the bottom and then you're going to be creating a wall. So here I have hit um, a stitch where I had two single crochets in it. I'm going to ignore that. I'm just going to keep going and make a single crochet all the way around. And then tug a little bit, tuck it under. I think the tucking actually is more important than the the tucking is more important than the tugging. And I'm not sure if you can see it yet, but it's already starting to curl a little bit, which is what you want. And I'm not changing how tightly I crochet. The crochet stitch itself is the same and I still want to like pull my uh, yarn upwards and I want to make sure that it's being worked on the outside rim. Just a little bit of a tug, tuck it under the previous round. All right, just a little bit of a tug. This is going to be the only round where you're going to be doing this tug and tuck um, because you want to change the amount of, I, I never know what to call it, piping. This is piping filler. Um, you want to change the amount of piping filler used. So you can see I'm going to take a quick break here. You can see it's starting to curl, right, because I've used less. So if I, if I know that this is the outside of my basket. Um, if I twist it upwards, so this is if you want to make a bowl and that this is the inside, right? But that's not what I want. I want this is the outside, so I'm going to twist it the other way. Okay, and you can see this is the inside of my basket, and you can see it starting to come up and form the bowl shape, right? So this is the sort of the corner edge, right? And you can see that because I have pulled the uh, piping a little bit tighter, it's now sitting on top. It's using the same amount of piping instead of moving flat and using an increasing amount of piping. So I'm going to keep finishing this round and then I'll show you how to um, keep working on the wall. So if this is confusing for you to fold it out, you can keep it folded in like this. It makes it a little bit easier until you're done with the round. All right, so we're coming up on the edge of end of this round. Um, there's no join. Again, we're working this as a coil, so it's worked as a spiral. But I wanted to show you that we've started building this, the walls of the basket, and it's time to stop tugging. Okay, so we're coming up on the last few stitches. And I'm going to stop here. So you can see that it's starting to bowl in a little bit, right? So we're going to flip it. I'm going to stretch this out. I'm going to flip it. So now it looks like this. Okay, so you can see the walls building. It looks like a very flat. Uh, plate with a very, very sh small rim, okay? So now what we're going to do is we're going to continue working single crochets all along, but you can let this go now. You don't have to keep tugging at it. I'll show you. Okay, so now we're going to work single crochets as usual, it's single crochets from here on out, no increases, but because we already have this rim, I'm not going to keep tugging in further because I don't need it tighter than what it is already here. If I tug it in further, then the bowl is going to look like, the, the sorry, the walls of the basket are going to turn in. So if I want my the walls of my basket to stay straight, then I want to relax and then just work single crochets without touching the filler again. Okay, so you just let it go. 
I mean, you might, you might want to tug it very, very gently every once in a while just to make sure that it's steady so it doesn't start curling towards the outside because you don't want the walls of the basket to go outwards unless you do want it. Um, so basically, how you manipulate the piping is how you're going to shape your basket. You can keep it straight, you can arch it outwards, or you can tighten it inwards. I want to keep it straight, so I'm going to just... Mo for the most part, let the piping go where it wants to go, but occasionally just make sure that it's sitting on top, instead of sitting on the outside, sitting on top of the filler from the row before. And then every once in a while, I'll just kind of do a very gentle tug, make sure it's looking all right, check the walls, fold it up a little, and make sure that everything is looking okay. So I will be back um, after I've made the walls a little bit and show you how to change colors. Okay, so as you can see, I have made the walls to my basket. These are about six inches high. This is all single crochet here. This is the inside of my basket. This is the outside. And right now I'm going to show you how to change colors if you decide to change colors on your basket. I'm going to be changing from this golden yarn to white. I'm using the same yarn, just a different color, so that the texture of the basket uh, is consistent. So let me show you how we're going to do this. Now let's say I want to end the yellow right here. You can end anywhere. It's pretty arbitrary. You can make the walls as high as you want, uh, but let's say I want to end right on this stitch. So I'm going to take um, my yarn and I'm going to cut it. I don't have to leave a tail, I'm just going to cut. And then I'm going to tie this yellow end to my white end. Now I don't have a lot to work with here, but all I have to do is if I know that I'm going to cut here, then I just have to pull back a little bit and just release a couple uh, stitches and now I have a lot of yarn to work with. I can cut and then tie and then I will work all the stitches as if it were a single piece of yarn and then wherever it changes color, it'll change colors. Okay, so let me do that right now. So this is the way I've chosen to do it. I'm going to find an arbitrary point in my yellow yarn. I'm just going to cut. Okay, and then I'm going to take my white yarn and this is an invisible knot. This is one of my favorite knots to use. You hold both ends. So I hold it with my thumb and my middle finger. And I'm going to wrap it around, around my thumb, but not my middle finger. Once, twice, and then this time, I'm going to wrap it just around the ends, not around my thumb. And then, so it's kind of tucked in. I don't know if you can see it right there. You want to tuck in the ends under your thumb and then you're just going to pull. And you come up with this teeny tiny little knot. It is a knot. Some people don't like knots, uh, but that's completely up to you. So now I have basically a single strand of yarn. So I'm going to take my basket and then I'm just going to crochet stitch after stitch until I get to the color change. I'm not going to touch the filling. Um, I don't care. Oh, and there's the knot right there. All right. And it just happened that my knot is in the back or on the inside of the basket. So it's not even going to show. Now, if it does show and you don't want it to, you can always loosen, you can always pull back a couple stitches, loosen the stitches or tighten the stitches so that the knot ends up on the back. But you can see. I've changed colors and you can't even tell how I did it and there are no ends to weave in. So that's a really easy way to do this, um, the color change on a basket because, you know, for me the basket's pretty utilitarian and it doesn't really matter to me where the color changes. Okay, while I'm here, uh, I just did the color change and while I'm here I'm going to show you how to work the handles. So. The handles is the same. Um, it just means that 
you're not going to be working into the stitches from the previous row. You're going to be working stitches right around your uh, piping cord. So let's say I want to make, this is going to be my handle. All right, you're not going to make it even across the basket. You want a little bit, you want more cord than the amount of space. So I am using 13 stitches around the filling and then I'm going to skip eight, okay? So instead of inserting my hook into the next stitch, I'm just going to put my hook under the cord and pull a loop around the cord and that's one single crochet. Okay, and so I'm gonna continue making these. So that's three. All right, so I've made 13 single crochets around the cord itself. You can always even these out if you don't like the way they look. All right. And if you want the handles to be bigger, you just keep making um, single crochets around the cord. And you're not going to skip 13 stitches. I made 13 stitches up here. We're going to skip something less than 13 stitches so that we have, we can make the handles stick up. All right, so this is the last point where we inserted our hook into the basket. So I'm going to skip eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then I'm going to work into the ninth one, okay? So then you just, with your hook on the, um, the cord, you're just going to insert into the ninth one and then pull up a loop. You kind of have to hold the cord in place, the piping, I'm sorry, I use different words, and then you complete the single crochet. And then from there, just keep inserting um, into the next stitch as if it were the rest of the basket. And then you've connected the piping back to the basket itself. And now you have a handle. So you can make the handle as long as you want. Um, it's just a matter of this is the space that you're gonna skip for the handle. You can make it, if you wanted to make this basket with a shoulder length handle, then you really just have to make this really big loop and then keep working single crochets all along the piping. Um, and then once you're ready, you connect it right back to the basket. And then that's your handle. Okay, so you can see I've made I'm pretty much done with my basket. I've made both handles and I've cut my piping, my cord piping here. You can see it's already starting to fray. It frays so quickly and I'm going to be using uh, this yarn to secure the ends. Okay, so you can see that I could probably fit in two more stitches before the end. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to crochet two more. And I kind of want to make sure these are tight because I don't. I want to minimize the fraying. All right. Now I don't think I can do one more in the next stitch, so I'm actually going to work one into the same stitch as before. So it's like an increase. And I might more. I might make more than one. I think I'm going to do even a third stitch. Possibly even a fourth, whatever I feel like I need to do to really um, stop this from fraying. I'm trying to hold it in place. I think I'm okay here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut. So I'm going to cut the yarn. I'm going to leave my hook in place. I'm going to give myself a nice long tail because I don't really know how much yarn I'm going to need. All right, so I cut a nice long tail and I'm gonna thread it onto an embroidery needle. Actually, let me close it off first. So I'm gonna have this hole, I'm gonna pull it through and I'm gonna fasten off, okay? And now I'm going to thread the needle, thread the yarn onto a tapestry needle and then I'm gonna do whatever it takes to get this last part kind of secured in place. So I'm really just gonna go round and round, kind of like a, I guess it's a whip stitch. Um, there's really no rhyme or reason to this. Really just trying to close this fray. Um, one thing is if I don't like this gap here, one thing I can do is I can just work into the top and then work right into the bottom and kind of pull pull these two stitches 
together. So let's try that again. So I kind of made a loop and I'm going to pull these two stitches together so that it kind of um, smooths out the curve. All right. So I pulled those two stitches together. It smooths out the curve a little bit. It hides the ends even a little bit more. And then to really secure it, I am going to tie a knot. I'm going to insert into one of these back here. And then I'm going to tie a knot. All right, and that secures that in place. And then of course you can keep weaving in this yarn as much as you need to um, along the back until you feel like you're done. Which is why, this is why I also wanted a nice long length of yarn of tail uh, when I cut it because I just wasn't sure how much I was gonna need. All right, so let's Oh, I keep catching the cord itself. Okay, and then I can go back and forth a few more times if I feel like I need to, but then that way I have my handle and then I've tried my best to smooth this out. Um, and there it is. So you're gonna do the same thing with the inside as well. Let me flip this inside out. So I had left a nice long tail at the beginning, and you can see I did end up taping um, the ends of this because I knew if I left it, it would just completely fall apart. So given this tail, I can go around and around and wrap it in as much as I can. I can also just cut it a little bit shorter and then use the same sort of um, technique, if you can call it a technique, to wrap this inwards and then possibly push it right into the center, like curl it in, and then use my beginning tail to tighten it down and secure it in place. And that's how you close up the ends. And then, once all your ends are woven in and you cut all the yarn, your basket's complete. I hope you enjoyed this video. Remember to share your projects with me on social media with hashtag OneDogWolf. For more projects, patterns, and tutorials, subscribe to my newsletter and YouTube channel. Thanks for watching and happy crafting!